on this computer. There we are. This is evening prayer for Wednesday, June 17, 2020. Evening prayer, right two. We begin on page 115 in the Book of Common Prayer. And tonight is the observance of the commemoration of Marina the monk. We'll begin with a time of silence. Now I have muted everyone, so when it is time for you to, where you want to speak, just remember to unmute yourself and we will continue. Yours is the day, O oh God, yours also the night. You established the moon and the sun. You fixed all the boundaries of the earth. You made both summer and winter. Let us confess our sins against God and our neighbor. Most merciful God, we confess that we have sinned against you in thought, word, and deed, by what we have done and by what we have left undone. We have not loved you with our whole heart. We have not loved our neighbors as ourselves. We are truly sorry and we humbly repent. For the sake of your Son, Jesus Christ, have mercy on us and forgive us, that we may delight in your will and walk in your ways to the glory of your name. Amen. Almighty God, have mercy on us. Forgive us all our sins through our Lord Jesus Christ. Strengthen us in all goodness, and by the power of the Holy Spirit, keep us in eternal life. Amen. O God, make speed to save us. O Lord, make haste to help us. Glory to the Father, and to the Son, and to the Holy Spirit as it was in the beginning, is now, and will be forever. Amen. Alleluia. Let us pray together the hymn, O Gracious Light, as found on page 118. O gracious light, pure brightness of the ever-living Father in heaven, O Jesus Christ, holy and blessed, now as we come to the setting of the sun, and our eyes behold the vesper light. We sing your praises, O God, Father, Son, and Holy Spirit. You are worthy at all times to be praised by happy voices. O Son of God, O giver of life, and to be glorified through all the worlds. The Psalms appointed for this evening are Psalms 81 and 82, beginning on page 704 in the Book of Common Prayer. And note that at the, uh, towards the end of Psalm 82, it looks like it ends at the bottom of 704, you, uh, 705. You will need to turn the page because there's one more verse at the top of page 706. So beginning on page 704, Psalms 81 and 82. And we will pray the Psalms in unison. Sing with joy to God our strength and raise a loud shout to the God of Jacob. Raise a song and sound the timbrel, the merry harp and the lyre. Blow the ram's horn at the new moon, and at the full moon, the day of our feast. For this is a statute for Israel, a law of the God of Jacob. He laid it as a solemn charge upon Joseph when he came out of the land of Egypt. I heard an unfamiliar voice saying, I eased his shoulder from the burden. His hands were set free from bearing the load. You called on me in trouble and I saved you. I answered you from the secret place of thunder and tested you at the waters of Meribah. Hear, O oh my people, and I will admonish you. O oh Israel, if you would but listen to me. There shall be no strange God among you. You shall not worship a foreign God. I am the Lord your God, who brought you out of the land of Egypt and said, Open your mouth wide, and I will fill it. And yet my people did not hear my voice, and Israel would not obey me. 
So I gave them over to the stubbornness of their hearts to follow their own devices. Oh, that my people would listen to me, that Israel would walk in my ways. I should soon subdue their enemies and turn my hand against their foes. Those who hate the Lord would cringe before him, and their punishment would last forever. But Israel would I feed with the finest wheat and satisfy him with honey from the rock. God takes his stand in the council of heaven. He gives judgment in the midst of the gods. How long will you judge unjustly and show favor to the wicked? Save the weak and the orphan. Defend the humble and needy. Rescue the weak and the poor. Deliver them from the power of the wicked. They do not know, neither do they understand. They go about in darkness. All the foundations of the earth are shaken. Now I say to you, you are gods, and all of you children of the Most High. Nevertheless, you shall die like mortals and fall like any prince. Arise, O God, and rule the earth, for you shall take all nations for your own. Glory to the Father, and to the Son, and to the Holy Spirit, as it was in the beginning, is now, and will be forever. Amen. We continue with a reading from Scripture. A reading from the Gospel according to Matthew. At that time, the disciples came to Jesus and asked, Who is the greatest in the kingdom of heaven? He called a child, who he put among them and said, Truly I tell you, unless you change and become like children, you will never enter the kingdom of heaven. Whoever becomes humble like this child is the greatest in the kingdom of heaven. Whoever welcomes one such child in my name welcomes me. If any of you put a stumbling block before one of these little ones who believe in me, it would be better for you if a great millstone were fastened around your neck and you were drowned in the depth of the sea. Woe to the world because of stumbling blocks. Occasions for stumbling are bound to come but woe to the one by whom the stumbling block comes. If your hand or your foot causes you to stumble, cut it off and throw it away. It is better for you to enter life maimed or lame than to have two hands or two feet and to be thrown into the eternal fire. And if your eye causes you to stumble, tear it out and throw it away. It is better for you to enter life with one eye than to have two eyes and to be thrown into the hell of fire. The word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. Well, as I mentioned earlier, today is the observance of Marina the monk, not to be confused with Attila the Hun, as I said last night, it's a little joke, but I, I will tell you that when I look ahead to the scripture readings and the observance of the day. When I saw this one, I read it and went, hmm, sometimes they have alternatives available for us. And I searched for different alternatives, went to three different sources, and they all say, no, today we observe Marina the monk. And she is an odd one. <laughs> so let me just uh, tell you this story. Um, <laughs> she was from the Byzantine area. Um, and was known throughout Syria and Lebanon. But she was born, uh, Marina was born Mariam, the offspring of a wealthy Christian parents, and was actually born as a man, a young boy. And his mother died when um, Marina was very young, and thus he was raised by, in a devout Christian uh, life by his father, Eugenius. As his age of marriage drew near, Marina's father wished to retire to a monastery after he had found his child a husband. When Marina learned of his father's pain plan, and I realized I have to back up. 
She was born a woman, <laughs> okay? Born a woman, all right? So father decides she needs to get married and starts looking for a um, husband for her. And when Marina learned of her father's plan, she asked why her father intended to save his own soul but destroy hers. That is a direct quote. And when asked by her father, what should I do with you? You're just a woman. She answered that she would renounce women's clothing and live as a monk. She then immediately shaved the hair from her own head and changed her clothes to male ones. And her father, seeing his child's strong determination, as they describe it, gave all his possessions to the poor and traveled to the Kadisha Valley to enter a monastic community. He had had enough. Well, Marina followed him. And the two of them lived together at this uh, monastery as cellmates, as, as brothers. And after 10 years, uh, the father died, leaving Marina alone. And she continued to conceal the fact that she was actually born a woman. Well, you've got to remember, monastic life at that time uh, was involved in feeding, um, caring for the poor, binding up the wounds of, of those uh, who were sick, um, agricultural work, providing vegetables and food for folks. And so it was very much involved in the day-to-day -day life of the community. But later, a pregnant woman told her own father that Marina was to blame. And on hearing the story, the abbot called Marina and reprimanded him severely. Remember, they all think he's a male. And when Marina realized what was happening, he fell to his knees and wept, confessing his sinfulness, although he never mentioned that particular sin. It was impossible, but did acknowledge that he was a sinner and asked for forgiveness. Well, the abbot misunderstood that, took that as an admission of guilt, and tossed him out of the monastery, where he lived outside the walls of the monastery as a beggar. And when the pregnant woman gave birth, Marina then asked if she could raise the child, and she did. And after 10 years, the monks convinced the abbot to allow Marina to return to the monastery. But they all still think she's a man. And at the age of 40, she became ill and died. And while preparing the body for burial, they discovered that Marina was indeed a woman. And it says here, it made them very distressed. <laughs> I can only imagine at that point. But apparently during the funeral prayers that were offered, one of the monks who was blind in one eye received full sight again after he touched the body. And of course, that's all that was needed was that miracle for folks to open their own eyes. And that's all we know about Marina the monk. Very odd story. But what is fascinating in here is it really is a lesson for us about judging, about assuming the worst of someone, that when they say, I am a sinner, we think, oh, it must be this sin or that sin, and we have our own ideas of what their issues may be, when really it's the Spirit that's just convicting them as the Spirit convicts all of us of our sinful nature. And what I like about this story of Marina is she never went to her own defense, but rather was content to serve as a monk, feeding, caring, nurturing, even when it meant uh, taking the blame for a, a pregnancy, for something she did not commit, and yet never uh, raised her voice in opposition. It reminds me of that psalm that we read this evening that talked about being humble and that God blesses those who are humble. Amen. We continue with the song of Simeon on page 120. Let's pray this together. Lord, you now have set your servant free to go in peace as you have promised. For these eyes of mine have seen the Savior, whom you have prepared for all the world to see, a light to enlighten the nations, and the glory of your people Israel. Glory to the Father and to the Son and to the Holy Spirit, as it was in the beginning, is now, and will be forever. Amen.
we continue with the Apostles' Creed, also on page 120. I believe in God, the Father Almighty, creator of heaven and earth. I believe in Jesus Christ, his only Son, our Lord. He was conceived by the power of the Holy Spirit and born of the Virgin Mary. He suffered under Pontius Pilate, was crucified, died, and was buried. He descended to the dead. On the third day, he rose again. He ascended into heaven and is seated at the right hand of the Father. He will come again to judge the living and the dead. I believe in the Holy Spirit, the Holy Catholic Church, the communion of saints, the forgiveness of sins, the resurrection of the body, and the life everlasting. Amen. We continue with the prayers that begin on page 121. The Lord be with you and also with you. Let us pray. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread and forgive us our trespasses as we forgive those who trespass against us and lead us not into temptation but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom and the power and the glory forever and ever. Amen. We continue with Suffrage A on page 121. Show us your mercy, O Lord, and grant us your salvation. Clothe your ministers with righteousness. Let your people sing with joy. Give peace, O Lord, in all the world, for only in you can we live in safety. Lord, keep this nation under your care and guide us in the way of justice and truth. Let your way be known upon earth, your saving health among all nations. Let not the needy, O Lord, be forgotten, nor the hope of the poor be taken away. Create in us clean hearts, O God, and sustain us with your Holy Spirit. We continue with a number of collects. The collect for the day. Give us grace, Lord God, to refrain from judgments about the sins of others, that like your servant Marina the monk, we may hold fast to the path of discipleship in the midst of unjust judgments. Through Jesus Christ, our Lord, who lives and reigns with you and the Holy Spirit, one God, forever and ever. Amen. Please join with me in the Collect for Peace on page 123. Most holy God, the source of all good desires, all right judgments, and all just works, Give to us, your servants, that peace which the world cannot give, so that our minds may be fixed on the doing of your will, and that we, being delivered from the fear of all enemies, may live in peace and quietness through the mercies of Christ Jesus, our Savior. Amen. The Collect for Aid Against Perils be our light in the darkness, O Lord, and in your great mercy defend us from all perils and dangers of this night. For the love of your only Son, our Savior, Jesus Christ. Amen. And please join with me in the Collect for the Presence of Christ on page 124. Lord Jesus, stay with us. For evening is at hand and the day is past. Be our companion in the way. Kindle our hearts and awaken hope that we may know you as you are revealed in scripture and the breaking of bread. Grant this for the sake of your love. Amen. And I offer this collect for guidance from the Book of Common Prayer. Direct us, O Lord, in all our doings with your most gracious favor and further us with your continual help that in all our works begun, continued, and ended in you, we may glorify your holy name. And finally, by your mercy, obtain everlasting life. 
through Jesus Christ, our Lord. Amen. Please join with me in the Collect for Mission on page 124. Keep watch, dear Lord, with those who work or watch or weep this night. And give your angels charge over those who sleep. Tend the sick, Lord Christ. Give rest to the weary. Bless the dying. Soothe the suffering. Pity the afflicted. Shield the joyous. And all for your love's sake. Amen. And I offer this collect, a collect in, in times of conflict. For oh God, you have bound us together in a common life. Help us in the midst of our struggles for justice and truth to confront one another without hatred or bitterness and to work together with mutual forbearance and respect. Through Jesus Christ, our Lord. Amen. At this time, I invite you to unmute yourselves and offer any intercessions and thanksgivings, either silently or aloud. Thanks. Carolyn Bailey. Richard and Donna. Okay. Pray for healing for my brother Mark, for my brother Doc, for my daughter Natalie, and for my daughter in law Rachel. And I give you thanks for my Holy Cross family. thanks for those who are willing to serve in the parish, especially in helping today with our recording of the Sunday service. Thanks for that opportunity. Mm. I pray for healing for Jane and for Mary. For Julie Gates, sister Laura. Pray for safe travels for our daughter Megan and her family coming to the mountains this weekend. Lovely. Our fathers. For those with shelter and food insecurities. We remember the unemployed and the homeless, those who have lost hope. May God through us bring them comfort and hope. <coughs> All these prayers and thanksgiving we lift to your presence, O God, to the throne of grace. In the name of Christ Jesus, our Lord. Amen. Amen. Please join with me in praying the general thanksgiving on page 125. Almighty God, Father, we, your unworthy servants, give you all humble thanks. For all your all goodness, your goodness and, loving and loving kindness to us and to all to whom, all whom you have made. We bless you for our creation, preservation, and all the blessings of this life. But above all, for your immeasurable love in the redemption of the world by our Lord Jesus Christ, for the means of grace and for the hope of glory. And we pray, give us such an awareness of your mercies that with truly thankful hearts we may show forth your praise, not only with our lips, but in our lives, by giving up ourselves to your service, and by walking before you in holiness and righteousness all our days, through Jesus Christ our Lord, to whom with you and the Holy Spirit be honor and glory throughout all ages. Amen. Almighty God, you have given us grace at this time with one accord to make our common supplication to you. 
And you have promised through your well-beloved Son that when two or three are gathered together in his name, you will be in the midst of them. Fulfill now, O Lord, our desires and petitions as may be best for us, granting us in this world knowledge of your truth, and in the age to come, life everlasting. Amen. Amen. Let us bless the Lord. Thanks, Thanks to be to God. The grace of our Lord Jesus Christ and the love of God and the fellowship of the Holy Spirit be with us all evermore. Amen. 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 Hallelujah. Amen. Thank you. Thank you.